Well, hello there, Tiga K Baptist Church. It's good to come to you again. Uh, I will say this is probably the last midweek update I will do for quite some time uh, because we're starting, uh, Lord willing, this Sunday to meet back on campus. And um, that will include some Wednesday activities as well coming up. So uh, this will probably be my last midweek update uh, at least for the foreseeable future. We are making the decision to continue online uh, for our uh, worship service on Sunday mornings. And so you can continue to find us on Facebook or YouTube or on our website there. So we hope you'll join us there. Uh, good grief, a lot of you have responded and registered already the number of people that are coming with you this Sunday to church and it, it's uh, it's pretty astounding. I'm not sure we quite expected that many to come back right off, but I'm looking forward to it. Uh, it's going to be uh, Joseph Hammerley's first Sunday leading our worship, so we'll be glad to welcome him and we'll be glad to welcome you too. And if your conscience allows and social distancing in your mind allows, uh, I'll be glad to hug your neck too. <laughs> so it's going to be good to see you this weekend. Hey, um, I, I think that's pretty much all we have kind of in the way of announcements. Um, just basically stay tuned to what we post uh, for updates online and uh, on our website and, and we'll keep you in the loop of what's going on there. But I do want to uh, go to scripture for just a little bit today. It would be wrong of me to let this time go with the kind of situation that we're in without saying anything. So I'd like to just very briefly uh, not be political but just to um, look at what scripture says is expected of us and what pleases God and that's what we need to focus on in these times. I, I, I mean, I don't think it's a political statement at all to say that uh, violence is, is, is not God's plan for this. Um, looting and burning down and fighting and throwing things at each other is not uh, God's, uh, what God's, how God's people ought to react to these things. Um, but it's also quite a tragedy that there are people groups in the United States in the 21st century who do not feel safe. And uh, that is, uh, that's a tragedy in itself too. So without further discussion of that, let me just address who we should be as the church in this situation. And first of all, I, I want to say that our worship during this time is so very, very important and that we be sure that it's truly worship from the heart and worship that really centers on God and focuses on God because otherwise we're just sounding brass and, and the tinkling cymbals and uh, it just doesn't doesn't really change anything in society and it doesn't really change anything in our own lives. So we need to focus on Jesus Christ, focus on true worship. And Isaiah chapter 1 had some things to say about that. Uh, the prophet says, listen to the Lord, you leaders of Israel. Listen to the law of our God, people of Israel. Uh, you act just like the rulers and people of Sodom and Gomorrah. I'm sick of your sacrifices, says the Lord. Stick with me on this. It says, I'm sick of your sacrifices, says the Lord. Don't bring me any more burnt offerings. I don't want the fat from your rams or other animals. I don't want to see the blood from your offerings of bulls and rams and goats. 
Why do you keep parading through my courts with your worthless sacrifices? The incense you bring me is a stench in my nostrils. Your celebrations of the new moon and the Sabbath day and your special days for fasting, even your most pious meetings, all are sinful and false. I want nothing more to do with them. I hate all your festivals and sacrifices. I cannot stand the sight of them. From now on, when you lift up your hands in prayer, I will refuse to look. Even though you offer many prayers, I will not listen. For your hands are covered with the blood of your innocent victims. Wash yourselves and be clean. Let me no longer see your evil deeds. Give up your wicked ways. Learn to do good. Seek justice. Help the oppressed. Defend the orphan fight for the rights of widows. And then probably the most famous verse, one of the most famous verses in the book of Isaiah, God says to his people, then come now and let us reason together. Um, let me just stop here and say, one of the things that the prophet, that God is trying to tell us through the prophet here in Isaiah chapter one is that it's easy to say religious things. It's easy to go through religious motions. It's easy to say, oh, what a tragedy. Or it's easy to say, look what our country is, is turning into. Or look at all of this chaos in the world. And all of that is true. It's troubling. It's all troubling. But I think more troubling from the perspective of looking at God's people is we, we don't need to be a people of just lip service. We don't need to be a people that just pontificates our religious ideas from here down, but rather we need to be a people that are salt and light. We need to be in our communities making a difference. Our voices do need to be heard. Uh, we need to vote with our voices. We need to stand up for what is right, what is just, what is good, what is godly. Um, in fact, uh, one other time the children of Israel were looking at what they could do in response to uh, uh, God's case against them. And in Micah, the sixth chapter, starting with the sixth verse, they say, what can we bring to the Lord to make up for what we've done? Should we bow before God with offerings of yearling calves? Should we offer him thousands of rams and tens of thousands of rivers of olive oil? Would that please the Lord? Should we sacrifice our firstborn children to pay for the sins of our souls? Would that make him glad? No. People, the Lord has already told you what is good. And that is what he requires. Now listen to this. It says, to do what is right, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. You know what the world needs right now? The world does not need any more Facebook posts with clever sayings, uh, pro or con, of any of the stuff going on. The world doesn't need any more uh, just random Bible verses put up there on social media or something to make your statement. The world needs us to do what is right, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with our God. And going back to Isaiah 1, that is more than just going through our religious traditions. That is more than just assembling and saying, Oh, look at what a sad shape this world is in. Let's pray for them. Let me tell you something. We do need to be praying. We need to be praying now more than ever probably. But we need to do more than prayer. We need to do more than congregate. We need to do more than post things on social media. We do need to stand up and do what is right. We do need to love mercy. Now listen to that. Love mercy, not vengeance not violence, not uh, let's get even, or the, let's pit the good guys versus the bad guys in your book, uh, 
but no, let's love mercy. You know, I, I, I tell you something, I'm, I'm glad that uh, God is merciful towards me. Aren't you glad that he's merciful towards you? So as we look at the news and we look at the chaos in our society and uh, a lot of injustice going on and, and just a, a, a lot of anger and, and hatred and violent behavior going on, I want you to remember what this says. God wants us to put our hands and feet to our faith, not just make some statement, but to put uh, our hands and feet to it. Like he said in Isaiah 1 17, learn to do good, seek justice, help the oppressed, defend the orphan, fight for the rights of widows. And then very similar in Micah, uh, do what is right, love mercy, and walk humbly with your God. I don't know all the time what that means for you, um, but I know for me, it's more than just preaching a sermon and it's more than just doing a post on the internet somewhere. It's living out day by day. It's voting accordingly. It's loving people accordingly with that kind of mercy. And it's trying to be that salt and light that flavors this world and preserves this world and exposes the darkness in this world. That is who we're supposed to be as God's people. In the midst of whatever political opinions that you have, whatever divides we have in this country, God's people are all shapes, sizes, colors, tongues, tribes, nationalities, and as God's people, these are the things that we need to be about. Let's practice this church and let our light so shine that it'll magnify, that these good works will magnify the Father in heaven and not just make us look religion or get us some favor on our side, but we wanna glorify God in this entire situation. So church, let's hit our knees, let's put our hands and feet to our faith, and let's be salt and light in Tiga K, Fort Mill, Rock Hill, South Charlotte, and anywhere we can be, for God's sake. Jesus Christ is worthy, amen? He's worthy, let's live for him. Would you pray with me? Father, we thank you so very much that we can turn to you in good times and in bad times. We can turn to you in peace and in chaos. We can turn to you when our feelings are far from you and when we feel very intimate with you. And in all of those cases, Lord, you're always there. You don't move. You are the same yesterday, today, and forever. And for these things, Lord, we praise you and we thank you. I pray, God, that in these troubled times that the peace of God would reign supreme and that God's people would be ambassadors for mercy and justice and for peace and ultimately for giving you the honor and the glory for anything and everything. May we not do anything in our flesh because that's certainly gonna fail and it's gonna expose us, Lord, as frauds. We need to stand up for you, Lord, and help us to keep in touch with you, to let you lead us, trust you as we follow you, Lord, in how we should respond politically, spiritually, literally in every way, how we should respond, Lord. We trust you and we love you. And I pray to God that this coming weekend, as we start back to worship on this campus, that it would be a great, great chorus of hallelujahs for being able to be back together again in corporate worship. God, we look forward to this time. We ask your blessings now on everyone who hears this and sees this, and I pray, God, that we would live for you and love you first and foremost, put you in our lives as the top priority, Lord, which you are certainly worthy of that place and more. We love you, Lord Jesus. It's in your name we pray. Amen. 
God bless you. I hope you have a great day, a great rest of the week, and we will see you this weekend at Tiga K Baptist Church, either on campus or online. God bless. Thank you for being with us.